guys. Test to get my license to drive the school bus. It's three months. Three months. And I can't come here. I have to go way down Atlantic City. Yep. To do what? To just to get an appointment to take a test. Uh, a knowledge test to get a license to uh, a permit to drive the bus to drive the kids to school. You know what's important about that? Well, there's a shortage of bus drivers around right now while school is open. You would think that they would expedite that process for people like yourself. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. What's going to do about that? We're going to fix it, man. I'm telling you. Can we get some, uh, some uh, places that we can take the test? Absolutely. Yeah. There's always another way to get it done. And you're just not thinking outside the box. Okay. So, okay. so it's improving technology. Other states haven't entirely skipped the trip. We're going to have to go to motor vehicles to take care of business with new technology and the like. Yeah, just to take the written test. Right. So on the knowledge right. test, not right. the road test, but the knowledge test I can do online. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, I'm with you. All right, Jack. Sorry for giving me. In the history of the state, and that might be a bit more tolerable if we were delivering the fundamental services that citizens expect. But that hasn't been the case. It hasn't been the case in unemployment, where people wait month after painful month for unemployment benefits. Nor has it been the case with motor vehicles, where people have been terribly inconvenienced by lines and now long waits when they schedule an appointment. I just met a gentleman who's trying to become a school bus driver. There is an acute and emerging shortage of school bus drivers across the state. And this gentleman's now having to wait months to get his driver's license to drive a school bus, and he has to go all the way down to Atlantic City to get it done. That is intolerable. It's unacceptable. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's government failing our citizens and government failing our systems, like our school systems right now. You know, over the course of the pandemic, the University of Chicago did a study of each state's responsiveness to citizens during the pandemic. Well, guess who came in last? New Jersey. We're last again in the wrong things. And Terrible mistake. All pissed. You're right. They're, they're all pissed off. They said, wait a second. Right. What are you doing? Yeah. Why did you allow him to gain right. when you didn't have to? Again, uh, Governor Murphy, free and post-election, doesn't take questions, and that's concerning for uh, resident taxpayers and professionals to try and meet with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, important for all so, so, now, thank you for that. He's the only governor in the history of the state. Uh, in all the four years, I have a single editorial board meeting with the state. And then we take it sound disappointing, but I'm sure it's going to change for the better. So, thank you, sir. I promise you, I'm my attorney general. I'll be back. test going forward or expedite the test taking? So, this is not my first time, by the way. I think Bill Murphy's been here twice. When he ran four years ago, and when he's run for re-election. I've been here numerous times over the past 22 months that I've been a gubernatorial candidate, and I want to show solidarity with the Jewish community and hear what their concerns are about the community so I can work on them in partnership with them as governor. But as a Republican, obviously you need a strong showing in Monmouth and Ocean, right? We need a strong showing up and down the state, and I believe we're going to get that. So every Republican is equally important, every town is equally important, every county is equally important, and we're working hard. That's why we declared earlier. Senator Singer, that's a Joining us this evening, the Republican nominee for the governor of New Jersey, 
Jack Cidarelli. Who has come to see a little bit of a sample of the retirement communities in our fine, uh, fine city. Uh, what you see here, uh, if I may call you Jack. Please. If what you see here is a sampling of thousands of people who have chosen to come because there are, in this city, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of young families studying Torah. This is like the, the Torah citadel of America. And uh, I, for example, have eight married children here in this community. And uh, many of us have many, many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren in this community. And therefore, this springs up all over our town, uh, these kind of retirement communities, for us to be with our families and to be with our children. I think it's important, it's not only important, but it's wonderful for you to get a little bit of a bird's eye view. What you saw here today, we do this three times a day. We gather to pray three times a day. In our prayers, by the way, we pray not just for ourselves, but we pray for all the people of the earth. We pray for their well-being and their betterment. And in a world that has gone mad, in a world over, and that means we pray this for ourselves, we don't know what's good for us. We don't know what's good for us. Uh, sometimes somebody gets public office, and then they have a bad, a bad, uh, a bad run. I mean, look what happened to Governor Cohen. And uh, in even a worse way, look at what happened to President Kennedy. Uh, so our blessing to you is that Hashem should fulfill your requests for the good. And if it's good for you, then you should become our next governor. And when you do, if you do, uh, you should remember always that uh, Jews stand for all basic uh, values that have been around for thousands of years. Mm. We stand for morality, we stand for honesty. We stand for family. By us, family <clears throat> very big. We stand for care and concern of our fellow man. And uh, again, we wish you all the best. And now I introduce to you uh, Jack. It's a great day in Lakewood. I can't wait to come back as governor-elect.